Hi, thank you very much, Mary, for the kind introduction. Um, welcome, everybody. Very glad to see so many of us online today. Now, my topic is on why do we have unused medicines? Ah, there we go. Now, unused medicines are defined as medicines that are no longer needed or expired, spoilt, or damaged. The consequences of having unused medicines in the home includes risk of accidental poisoning of children, older person with dementia, or maybe person with learning disability or pets. There can even be medication error because the person could be taking the wrong medicines. It can also contribute to clutter and taking up space, and it's a waste of money. Who are more likely to have unused medicines in their homes? Kim Mai, uh, yes. uh, maybe I need you to speak loud, uh, to have a louder voice. Oh, a louder voice? Okay. Um, maybe I should take off my headphones then. You try and see? Yeah. Oh, maybe my... Wait a minute. Can you hear me better now? I can hear you well and clear. Okay. Oh, Prof. Thank Deborah you. can hear me well and clear. Should I okay. start again or can I continue? Okay, continue. Continue? Okay. So other people um, who could have unused medications would be a household with people of different age groups and different conditions. The children may have cough and cold or a rash, diarrhea, vomiting, fever, and acne. Adults might have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and gout. And older persons, they may have had a stroke, arthritis, osteoporosis, heart disease, and cancer. Also, a person who has recovered from their illness, such as a common cold or diarrhea or gout attack or infection, may have unused medicines in their home. Sorry, the slides are stuck. So these are the people who may have unused medicines in their home. I'm trying to advance my slides. There we go. Also, people who were not compliant to their treatment, for example, they did not follow their instructions, they took less frequently than prescribed, either they forgot or decided to do so, or they took a lower dosage than prescribed. They may also have decided to stop their treatment themselves. There are also people who take over-the-counter medicines and supplements, such as paracetamol, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, multivitamins, coenzyme Q10, garlic pills, chondroitin sulfate, vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin B complex, and omega-3 fatty acids. These are just examples of what people may buy over the counter. There can also be people whose condition in life has changed. They may have become frailer with weight loss, postural hypotension, which is a condition where when a person gets up from a lying down or sitting position, their blood pressure may drop and they may feel weak and tired. There's also possibility of kidney impairment and liver impairment. There are also older persons undergoing palliative care or is dying with a serious condition. And it may be cancer, end-stage kidney failure, heart failure, or severe dementia. Some patients also may not tolerate previous medicines that were started when they were younger and fitter. So in an older, frailer person, the targets of treatment may be different because they cannot tolerate low blood pressure or low blood sugar, for example. Then their medications may be stopped or the doses reduced. Why are medicines stopped or changed? Because of side effects or they could be ineffective or drug interactions with other drugs or simply is not needed anymore. The dosages of medicine could also be increased or decreased. Sometimes people may stockpile their medicines at home because they collect the medicines from the pharmacy just in case it's needed in future. So it's better to stop tape before collecting the next prescription. Many people also keep the medicines that's no longer needed just in case. So how do we reduce unused medicines? This is a nice poster that we have for public awareness. We collect or buy medicines only when we need them and we don't keep medicines just in case. The other reasons for having unused medicines, if the medicines have expired or they were spoilt or damaged due to being stored incorrectly at the wrong temperature, 
or left in the car, either it's too hot um, in the car and also in other places like the kitchen where it may be too hot. Um, some people also like to open their uh, blister packs and take out all the tablets and put in a bottle but that can cause a bit of oxidization and damage as well. So it's better to leave your medicines inside its blister pack so that it stays safe and not oxidized. Again, this is another poster we use for our public awareness uh, campaigns. It says store medicines according to instructions. We have to read the box and the label, uh, whether we store at room temperature, definitely not in the car, protect from light, or some of the medicines need to be stored in the fridge. We should also check our medications monthly for the amount and expiry, and we should return unused medicines to a pharmacy as soon as possible. So in summary, there are many reasons people have unused medicines in their home. We aim to reduce unused medicines at home with the following steps, such as stock taking. On the left here, I'd like to show you a very nice example of a 78-year-old man's inventory of his medicines. He does not have any dementia. We can see that he listed out um, all the medications, what's the daily dose, and the stock position at this certain date and when the stock will run out by. So this gentleman always does stock taking before he presents himself to the pharmacy. So we should only collect what we need and return unused medicines for safe disposal. So thank you very much. That's the end of my short talk. Apologies for the slight um, technical hiccup earlier. I hope you could hear me uh, towards the last parts of the talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Tan, for your very insightful uh, sharing. Uh, yeah, so sorry about the small technical, uh, not really as technical. Uh, I think you can hear, we can hear you very clearly. Really appreciate your sharing. Thank you once again. Okay, if you, if the, anyone who have any questions to ask Dr. Tan or any other participants, please type your question in the chat box. Dr. Tan and the rest of the presenters will answer the question at the end of all the presentations. Next, I shall invite Professor Dr. Debra Singh, a professor in the Department of Pharmacology, Faculty of Medicine, UM. She is also the founder of this Safe Dump project. In this webinar, Prof. Debra Sim will tell us on the impact of improper disposal of unused medicine on the environment. Prof. Debra Sim, the floor is yours. I beg your pardon. Have I unmuted myself? Uh, now I can hear you. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Th uh, good afternoon to everybody. Thank you for coming here. I hope um, you not only enjoy the series, uh, what we are presenting here, but you'll find uh, what we are sharing will be beneficial to you as well. So my title will be is on impact of improper disposal of unused medicines on the environment. Now you've just heard from Dr. Tan about why people have unused medicines at home starting from the older people with multiple medical conditions to adults with chronic diseases, children with acute infections, to people who are taking over-the-counter medicines and health supplements, as well as those who are non-compliant, not uh, following the order or instruction of the doctor, or that uh, condition have changed and their prescriptions have changed. So what happened to these unused medicines that they may have? At home, Dr. Tan also has actually mentioned that some of them hoard the medicines uh, for the rainy days, um, just in case I need it again. I don't have to trouble myself to go to the hospital or see the doctor. And some may even share their medicines with other people, thinking that uh, what, may, what has helped me in my cough may also help the other person in his or her cough. And not knowing that sometimes the cause for the cough may be different and so may need different types of medications. But for most of us, I think, uh, would just throw away our unused medicines um, at home. What I'd like to then share with you is then what is the impact of these unused medicines on the various? And there are three main areas that I'd like to uh, introduce, but then I will focus on one of them. The first area is actually on the economy. 
Uh, Dr. Tan also has mentioned that if you don't use the medicine, then it's a waste. It's, a, it's either a waste of your own money if you are paid to buy the medicine or the taxpayer's money if the government has sponsored the medicines for you. Because any unused medicine is actually burned money. Second area is on people and animals. Uh, because if you have unused medicines at home, it may lead to accidental ingestion by, by little children who may think that they are sweets or, the, or your pets at home who may just pick things out from the dustbin. So then this may cause uh, public health hazards. And the third area is on our planets, our environment. Uh, whether you burn it or you throw it or you pour it down the sink, uh, eventually they will go back to the environment and there is a risk of global warming and contaminated on this. So the area that I'm going to focus in this presentation is on this area and environment. There are many, um, many ways in which pharmaceutical uh, compounds may get into the environments, starting from the time it was manufactured to the time it's being used to the time that it's ingested and then excreted and also uh, for those of us who throw the unused medicines away. So this is a part that I'm focusing on. What would these unused medicines do to the environment? Now first, let's see how they get into the environment. Now the most common way of disposing uh, and, um, household items, including the medicines, would be either pouring down the toilet, uh, the sink, or into the bin. However, um, we know that actually wastewater treatment does not remove medicine residue in the sewerage. You may think that, you know, oh, this water is being treated, so eventually it should be fine. But unfortunately, some of these chemicals cannot be uh, fully or completely removed. So, so it, therefore, it actually may end up uh, in our drinking water. And even discarded medicines that lands up in the landfills may also appear in surface water, eventually sip through it. And these unused medicines um, or medicine residue in the uh, water, in the surface water, would eventually cause antimicrobial resistance uh, because if many of these are antibiotic compounds, um, un, uh, indiscriminate use of these would cause antimicrobial resistance. It may cause, endo it has endocrine disrupting chemicals. Uh, these chemicals can affect reproductive health, uh, behavioral changes and even immune uh, system of the aquatic animals or, or people who may happen to be drinking or using those water, those contaminated water. And some of them may be um, carcinogenics because they may have been drugs that are used for treating cancers itself. On the other hand, um, unused medicines may also end up in the air, not just in the water, because some of us may burn the, our household waste, including the unused medicines in the backyard, or in the landfills, they may be open burning. And there are also, uh, unfortunately, in some waste manage management plants, if they do not use the proper kind of incinerator that is meant for treating medicinal products, then this incineration also may end up uh, with actually producing um, air pollution, greenhouse, greenhouse gases like the carbon dioxide, uh, nitrous oxide, ozone, and fluoride, uh, hy hy halogenated compounds, uh, fluoro or chlorinated compounds. And these are compounds that kind of form a uh, layer, protective layer uh, in the atmosphere and causes climate change leading to global warming. So unused medicines may also affect the environment in that aspect. So then why is therefore a safe disposal of unused medicine important? As you can see that I've already mentioned, they may actually end up uh, with the, the residues in surface water or in producing greenhouse gases causing global warming. So therefore don't pour it down the drain, don't toss it in the toilet and don't throw it into the garbage either. Because in that way, uh, then we can enjoy the blue sky and the clean water. And we can preserve our environments from contamination with the medicine residues that may end up in the surface water or the greenhouse gases. And this is what we don't want to happen. Okay? Uh, for that, we need your help. 
your cooperation. And that's why we actually run this particular webinar to raise awareness uh, among the public. So in summary, improper disposal of unused medicines has important impact on three areas, that's economy, public health, and environment of a country. And even the damage it caused on the environment can also indirectly affect the economy because the amount of money you spend in incineration and use medicine, in treating the water, in cleaning up the place, uh, all these cost money and they're likely to be taxpayers' money. And not to say that we also waste uh, the resources and also the accidental uh, ingestion, as well as abuse. Some people may abuse the drugs that are being left at home, which is meant for uh, the patients, but it's not for them. So they may end up with actually being abused by other people. So therefore, it's important to know how to dispose of the unused medicines in a safe manner. And this is where my colleague will be actually taking over from me after that. So we need your cooperation to keep our home safe from misuse of unwanted medicines, to leave our earth clean from contamination with discarded medicines, and make our resources stretch by reduction of medicinal wastage. And all these need your cooperations. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Debra, for your very interesting sharing. Uh, so anyone still, uh, thank you for all the questions that come in, has come in. Okay, we will answer that at the end of the session of the, all the presentation has done over, it's over. Okay, uh, right now, our next speaker is Associate Professor, Dr. Pauline Lai, who is a pharmacist and also the lecturer in the Department of Primary Care Medicine in Faculty of Medicine, UM. Dr. Pauline will let us know how to dispose of and use medicine safely. Please welcome Associate Professor Dr. Pauline Lai. The floor is yours, Dr. Pauline. Hi, Mary. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Can you hear me? Can. Can you see my slides? Can. Thank you. So good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our webinar. It's so good to see so many of you here today. So my talk is a follow on from Prof. Dr. Tan Kit Wan's and Prof. Dr. Deborah Sim's uh, talk. So I will actually uh, focus on how do you actually dispose of unused medicine safely. Um, in 2010, the Ministry of Health in Malaysia actually implemented the Return Your Medicines program. So the Ministry of Health 11 years ago was aware of this problem already. They, the aim of this program was to encourage patients to return their unused or excess medicines for safe disposal by the Ministry of Health. In 2016, the Ministry of Health actually collected some data. There was a conservative estimate of medicines returned to three MOH hospitals in Malaysia. And based on the value of their medicines, the value of the medicines that were returned were about 27,000, 53,000, and 190,000 ringgit, respectively. However, as you can imagine, this is a gross underestimation of medicine wastage, as this data only came from three hospitals, whereas there are 144 hospitals and special medical institutions in Malaysia. And in addition, there are almost 3,000 health clinics, the Clinic Kesehatan under MOH in Malaysia. So let's have a look. Uh, I mean, Prof. Debra has already told you this, but how do we Malaysians dispose of unused medicines? Well, 50% of them threw them away with normal garbage or by burning them. And 93% of university students were not aware of the Return Your Medicines program. And instead they flushed unused medicines down the toilet or sink. As mentioned by Prof. Deborah, disposal of unused medicines as a household garbage ends up in the landfill. Flushing them down the toilet or sink ends up in the sewage system, and thus it may contaminate soil or surface water. So ideally, 
unused specimens should be returned to authorized collectors for proper disposal to reduce releasing the unwanted active pharmaceutical ingredients into the environment. So these are how our medicines come in. They can come in in the form of a tablet or capsule in a liquid form, either in syrups or mixtures, creams or ointments, injections, dry powder inhalers, and eyes or eye or nose drops. So what do we do with these kind of medicines that have expired or they are unused? So we need to send them for incineration. However, pressurized medications like inhalers, these kind of medications are usually used for asthma uh, and for breathing difficulties. They can't be incinerated because they are actually medications that are produced under, uh, is actually pressurized inside this canister. Instead, just for this kind of medicines, they should just be thrown in the garbage bin. So in short, the take home message of this slide is, bring your expired or unused medicines to hospitals or to clinic kesehatan or to selected retail pharmacies. Now, the Faculty of Medicine and the UM Living Labs of the University of Malaya came up with this program called Safe Dump. Dump is an acronym for the Disposal of Unused Medicines Program. Um, because we are with the University of Malaya, our hospital is actually the University of Malaya Medical Center. So we initially tr uh, tried it out in our hospital and we had posters, uh, we had several posters all around the hospitals uh, informing the public when they walked in the corridors how to dispose of their unused medicines. And these are actually the collection bins just inside the pharmacy where the unused medicines are actually um, collected in a safe manner and then sent for incineration at a proper facility. Uh, with that, I thank you. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you, Dr. Polly Lai, for the very resourceful sharing. Um, okay, so right now, uh, we will have our next uh, speaker. I would like to invite Mr. Lu Jui Ling, the Medical Director of Caring Pharmacy, to tell us the role of caring pharmacy in the safe disposal of unused medicine. Mr. Lu, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mary. I'm actually a marketing director, not a managing director. So. <laughs> okay, uh, my name is JL Lu uh, Oops, from sorry. Caring Pharmacy. It's okay, it's okay. So uh, I'd like to share with you uh, our roles, uh, roles of caring pharmacy in these projects, uh, safe dump uh, projects. So, uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, Okay, so uh, handing over uh, this uh, unused or expired medicines to a pharmacy is not something new uh, in the world. It is uh, very common in uh, US uh, and also some other developed country. As you can see from picture here, uh, uh, CVS Pharmacy and also Walgreens, uh, these two uh, large chain pharmacy in US, they are offering space uh, to locate, to allocate this uh, uh, medications uh, disposal bins in their stores prominently so that the public can assess it and also return the unused medicines. Okay. But this is not uh, very common here and it almost not exists in Malaysia. There are a few factors uh, contributing to it. Uh, one is because there's a lack of public awareness as what uh, uh, Prof. Deborah and also uh, Dr. Pauline mentioned about it. So uh, publics or consumer do not know that uh, by throwing uh, medicines into the garbage bin and also pouring the liquid medicines into the sinks may cause pollution to the environments and also to the water supplies. Okay. So uh, secondly, even some may have a high awareness about this, uh, but there is a lack of uh, uh, disposed centers, uh, especially from the private sectors. Okay. So uh, there are few, only few government hospital, large government hospital offering this kind of service. Okay. Thirdly, uh, a pharmacy like us, uh, 
uh, as an operator who like to participate in it, also having difficulty to find uh, an incident center to handle the uh, expired medicines. Okay, so uh, when Mary, uh, the uh, project leader for the uh, Safe Dam project, approached us to be a uh, collection points uh, for the from for the publics uh, to dispose the uh, med medicines. So we accept it with the open hearts because this is in line with our corporate social responsibility initiative. So our aim is very simple. Uh, as a pharmacy, as a large uh, retail chain pharmacy, we sell uh, quite a number of medicines and we do not want in the end, the medicine end up uh, polluting the environments. So number one is to reduce the environment pollutions. Secondly, is to educate the public about uh, the proper dispose of medicines. So we have uh, done quite a number of uh, PR programs. Uh, we communicate this uh, uh, in, in, in our social medias, and also we have a poster display at our stores. So now you know you can uh, hand, handle your, your unused or expired medicines to us. So I would like to share with you uh, some of the steps, some of the uh, process, uh, how you are going to prepare your unused medicines and hand it to us and what we are going to do with that. Mr. Lu, there's no sound from your video. Oh, sorry, sorry. No sound, huh? Hold on. When you share screen, did share you put uh, share sound as well? Mm, it by default is... <laughs> so I repeat again, huh? sorry. Is this a music? Sorry. Okay, this uh, short video show you that uh, how are you going to handle the expired medicines. So uh, very easy, you just need to check your medicine cabinet regularly for any expired or unwanted medicines. And then the most important thing is to uh, remove any personal information. We do not want your personal information to be misused by somebody. Okay, so the next one is a, uh, is a favor uh, from us is to ask you to remove all the outer boxes, plastic wrap or packaging, as this is not going to send for installations. So uh, if you send to us, we still need to process it. Then the last thing is, of course, check your nearest uh, disposal centers. We are one of them. Uh, we have 21 store involved in these uh, projects. Okay, so... Uh, uh, as this poster say, not all medicine is acceptable in uh, in these uh, projects. Uh, okay, uh, the the one accepted is uh, prescription medicines uh, in the dry formats, a like capsule or tablets. Uh, we also accept over the counter medicines. Uh, popular one will be something uh, like palestamols. Then uh, medicated ointments and lotions. Uh, like some brands like uh, Tiger Balm, like uh, Salompas. Okay. Liquid medicines in leak proof containers, okay, like cough mixtures, like uh, fever medicines. And then we also accept uh, medicine for pets. Uh, but some items we do not accept it, like uh, vitamin and dietary supplements, as it can be safely disposed to uh, in, in the rubbish bins. Then uh, 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 Dr. Pauline also mentioned that aerosol cans and compressed gases, these are 
items also we cannot send for installation because uh, it tend to ex is an explosive items. Uh. Okay, then uh, needles and strings we also didn't handle this because it's not a chemical waste. Uh, when we accept the unwanted medicines, we do ask them uh, about the reason why they return the medicines. So as you can see from the pie chart here, the data actually we collected for the last two years. Lah. So uh, the main reason why they return the medicine is because the medicines is already expired up uh, as high as 65% of uh, surveillance uh, feedbacks. So up to 10% of the uh, consumer uh, they mentioned that they stopped the medicine because the by the advice from the advice of doctors. Okay, then seven point seven percent do not need the medicine anymore because uh, they have recovered from the illness. So there are some other reasons like the medicines are spoiled, patient has passed away. They stopped the medicines uh, because uh, uh, from the advice of doctors. Okay, and then also uh, due to side effect. Uh, and they have old stocks, and also uh, just happened that uh, they do not know what medicine it is for, and they just found at home. Also part of the reasons. Okay, so as what I mentioned, we have already twenty one uh, store participate in this project. So uh, you can uh, send your unused medicines to uh, all these twenty one stores. Uh, most of them is in Klang Valley. But we also have uh, uh, outlets in Malacca, in Ipoh, and, and some outlets in JB also accepting these unused medicines. Uh, we are going to extend it uh, to Penang uh, very soon. So uh, if you want to follow, I uh, want to check which store uh, actually participate in, in, the, in, in collecting the, the unused medicines, you can always uh, refer to our website and filter the outlets which participate in these programs. So we would like to urge uh, whoever attend these seminars to spread the news uh, to uh, let's do our parts to uh, check our medicines and uh, see any expired or unused medicines and then uh, send to us. We will uh, help to uh, dispose it. Thank you. Over to Mary. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lu, for the informative sharing. Ladies and gentlemen, okay. ladies and gentlemen, while you are typing your question in the chat box, uh, we have a short video for you. After the short video, we will take questions for the speakers. Okay, so I, yeah, uh, we have the video on and enjoy the video. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed the video. Now we shall start the question and answer session. Um, based on the, uh, the compilation, the first very common questions that 
uh, that's posted during Dr. Kidman's uh, session is regarding expiry date. Expiry date. Um, so um, we shall invite Dr. Tan just comment on what do you think of how uh, whether we uh, how long after uh, the uh, the medication expired can still be used or be taken. Oh. Thank you very much, Mary. I see a few common questions there, you are right, about the expiry date. For example, the first question was, what are the effects of the expired medicines? Are they poisonous or are they less effective? I think in general, they can be considered less effective if we have gone past the expiry date. Poisonous, I'm not certain. I don't think they are poisonous unless contaminated. Um, the same person asked about expired creams. So there will be um, the preservatives in the creams to keep it away from bacterial contamination, for example. So I think in general, it is not advisable to take medications or any creams that are expired um, because of fear of lack of effect. If it's a blood pressure pill or a, or a diabetes pill, you don't want it to be not effective. And then for the creams, if it has bacterial contamination, you could cause a skin infection or, or skin irritation. Then how long after expiry can minerals, supplements, and vitamins be safely taken? Again, um, we don't recommend taking after expiry. Like some of us are very naughty, isn't it? If it's just one month after expiry or half a, a few weeks, we might just say, it looks okay, it smells okay, we'll still take it. But that's at our own risk. Um, I don't recommend that for the medications, especially blood pressure pills and the diabetes pills. And um, how long can the supplements be kept after opening the bottle? That is another question I got. Um, in general, you follow the expiry date on the bottle. Some of the bottles would have that little piece of something to keep the uh, medications dry. The um, desiccant, they call it a desiccant. So don't remove that desiccant um, and keep it in the same bottle. Some of the bottles, they are dark colored to protect the pills from the light. So don't transfer containers. It's also dangerous to transfer containers. I think some people might like a particular container, so they'll transfer from one bottle to another bottle. So um, try not to um, take medicines or any other um, medications that are beyond the expiry date. Yeah. Okay. I think that's all I have to say for the moment. Are there any other questions for me? I'm happy to take them. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, we will wait for a while to see okay, any other questions course. for yeah. the plan yeah. later. Uh, yeah, about, uh, yeah. Uh, so there are many other questions uh, posted by the audience. And uh, due, due to the overwhelming uh, questions, we will focus on uh, the unused and expired medication question for now. Okay, so right now, may I invite uh, or ask the, uh, Prof. Deborah Sin to maybe uh, uh, answer some questions. One of them is, is there any proper mechanism of medis medicine take back system? What about the management techniques and of expired liquid pharmaceuticals? Uh, Dr. Bra, and also the other uh, questions uh, regarding the uh, taking back the, uh, uh, the returned and uh, take back the medication program. Dr. Bra? Hi, thank you. I think some of these uh, have been covered by Mr. Liu um, and also Pauline has mentioned about uh, how to actually kept, uh, take care of the medicines. Um, this is, in fact, the, one of the reasons why we have this webinar is actually to get the public to be aware and work with us. Um, as you already know, that not some of you mentioned that uh, you have tried to return medicine to the pharmacies. And some of them said, no, uh, this is not our responsibility. It's the Ministry of Health. Uh, so thank you very much. <laughs> we can't help you. Um, but here you are, Caring Pharmacy is trying to do that. Um, but they need help. Uh, now, remember, uh, Pauline also mentioned that, and I mentioned that. Uh, to dispose medicine properly, uh, we need to have, we use incineration, which is actually a a very a standardized way of actually burning. It's not open burning. They have, um, they have very rigid condition for actually burning these uh, medicines so that they do not produce un or harmful gases in the air 
or in the environment or do not leave residues which will harm uh, the environment. But, but this needs money. So who is going to bear the cost of actually incineration? Now, Caring Pharmacy is willing to actually now start collecting the medicine back from the public, but they have to hand it to somebody. And somebody will have to take over from there to actually then treat it appropriately. And incineration is one of the best way uh, to do it. Uh, so we need also, therefore, um, other agents um, and, and the government um, ministry to help to actually provide that. And so we hope some of you who may be working in this kind of ministry, who may know people who are working in this line, whether you can help us to connect with them, whether they are willing to partner with us to actually do this project so that we can see that there will be a a safer way of disposing these unused medicines as uh, you probably can see in more developed country. In our country, we're only just beginning. Uh, some, I think the government hospital pharmacy, um, they do take back, I think, but I read um, some of the comments also, one of the comments that said actually, uh, they only take medicines that they, they, that they dispense. If these medicines that are dispensed by other hospitals, other clinics, uh, these hospital pharmacies will not receive them back. So that's another issue concern uh, where caring pharmacy can provide um, the alternative. Have I answered the questions? Uh, I, to be honest, at this moment, uh, we are trying to work out a mechanism that is user, that is friendly uh, to everybody. But at this moment, there is only the, apart from the government hospital, Caring Pharmacy, uh, the community pharmacy who's uh, doing this. Thank you, Prof. Debra, uh, for the answers to certain some of the questions. Uh, there is another question uh, mentioned about what happened to the medicine when we return them to the pharmacy. Uh, maybe, uh, Prof. Debra, would you like to add on and maybe uh, Dr. Pauline Lai also can add on later on. Uh, is there any further comment that Prof. Debra would like to put uh, in for that question? So there are, when we talk about returning to pharmacies, you're talking about the hospital pharmacies, because of course the caring pharmacy, they've already explained to you what they, what they do with those medicines that you return to them. Now, let's also put things in perspective. I do not want to be uh, in a way saying things that we are not doing. Uh, it is a process. If you think of, we are a country with limited resources. We're not comparing ourselves to developed country where they have a lot more resources. So the ideal things happen to when, uh, the, the reason why we collect this unused medicine back is so that they are not causing harm to your household member or to the environment because the hospital would know how to handle this medicines properly. In the early days before we have this, when the resources were limited, perhaps you would have heard that in the early days, um, in places where maybe if the, the medicines that are being returned, if they are in good conditions, that they may be recycled or maybe used. But that is not the ideal situation. And that's not what we want to promote either. Okay, thank Oh, thanks, uh, Prof. Debra. Uh, okay, uh, we, maybe we will go on to uh, Dr. Pauline. Is there anything to add on regarding the uh, questions about um, the expired, or rather not expired, medications that return uh, to the pharmacy or to the hospital? Uh, does, uh, um, whether this uh, medication is taken back by ready care or incineration? Okay, Who collects uh, the uh, medication that is written by the public? Okay, thank you, Mary. I'll just uh, follow up on what Prof. Deborah said. Yeah, so when medicines are returned to the pharmacy, Mr. Lu has already explained what Caring Pharmacy does. Um, if we have sufficient manpower, we should actually catalog and uh, detail what medicines are returned so we know that 
what are the medicines that patients don't um, lack compliance to or are non-adherent to? And then if we catalog and we can actually then say, uh, provide a report back to management, to the doctors, it would be actually very helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, um, do we follow WHO guidelines when we implement, uh, do, do we follow WHO or FDA guidelines when implementing medical medication disposal practices? When we, as a committee, and initially we, we started up this project as a research team, we actually based our, the safe dump on the WHO practices. Uh, okay, next question is, are medicines return being reused for other patients? By right, it shouldn't be. That's according to the WHO guidelines as well. Um, the next question would be, how many community pharmacists actually practice good medication disposal? I might leave Mr. Lee to answer that one. I can't speak for community pharmacists because I'm not a community pharmacist. Mr. Lu, do you want to actually answer that question? I can answer that uh, later. Okay, you answer that later, okay. But, sorry. Um, um, is, if the medicine has already expired, can we still recycle it? I think Dr. Tan has actually gone through that. Multivitamins and supplements is actually a question for Mr. Lu. Okay, um, there's a suggestion here to give incentive for the return of unused medicine. We did think about it. We say, oh, if you returned X amount of medicines, then you will get a discount in your next purchase. But it's actually something very hard to implement, especially if we come from a government hospital like ours, where half the time our medicines are given free. So then how are we going to actually give a discount on already free medicines? So this was actually something that was thought of by us, but it was very hard to do, uh, to actually implement it uh, to, in actual practice. Okay, um, what are the selected pharmacies that collect the expired medicines? Um, in, it's not all Ministry of Health hospitals, it's not all clinical Seattle. You basically, because this is not a national wide program yet, the purpose of us having our webinar today is to actually increase the awareness of the public and it's a, a good start today. So we are actually advertising that certain retail pharmacies, for example, at like Caring Pharmacy, certain hospitals, for instance, like our hospital, the University of Malaya Medical Center, do collect unused medicines, but I can't speak for everybody. Um, Okay, um, I think that was all that I can answer. Over to you, Mary. Hey, thank you, uh, Polly. Sorry, could so, I just... Yes, uh, Dr. Uh, Pradebra, you can uh, add on. Uh, just, just mention about that incentive things, like uh, Dr. Pauline said, mentioned, we did think about that. The other concern we have is that uh, some people may abuse the system. They will go and steal medicine from other people or pick up medicines uh, that may be here. Uh, uh, discarded by other people and then uh, bring them back uh, to, to us, uh, to return to us uh, in order to get some incentives. So we don't want that to happen either. So even though uh, it was thought about, um, we were still trying to find a good way to encourage patients to return their medicines despite the inconvenience of coming to hospital, queuing up, um, even to so so caring pharmacies is helping us by making it more accessible, but um, still caring pharmacy doesn't reach everywhere in, in the country. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Prof. Deborah. So I think it's the right. Uh, it's uh, quite a great uh, good uh, flow to now uh, invite Mr. Lu to pick a. Uh, to, to continue on from the questions that's being asked by the uh, the uh, the floor and the the participants uh, regarding whether supplement supplements okay are the are all the supplements uh, can be sent for incineration is it the question? I think the the, the uh, in my slide I already mentioned this is not uh, hmm. one of the item we accept uh, this is also because. Uh, uh, on the guideline that uh, it, it is not something uh, uh, they accept for the chemicals incinerations. Uh. So uh, right now the supplements uh, 
uh, is the only way is you uh, throw into the rubbish bins. Uh. So I, I think a lot of question is uh, asking about accessibility. Uh. So uh, mm. in terms of the number of store and also whether it's a Clang Valley Central, in my slide also uh, I mentioned that uh, we try to uh, reach as many places as possible. So right now we have in Clang Valley, in JB, in Laka, in Ipos, although only maybe one or two stores. Uh, Okay, and then we are uh, reaching to Penang as well. So I tell you the difficulty in terms of the, the, the uh, this uh, uh, safe dump projects. Uh, uh, throwing or disposing medicine is not as easy as uh, maybe uh, many people think like uh, maybe I can place a dust, uh, the bin in, uh, in, in like just uh, recycling <laughs> bins uh, everywhere, putting in the shopping mall. It's not that easy because it's a control medicine. So. <laughs> So you can see in, in, in our short video also, uh, uh, our people have to do a lot of registrations, uh, documentations uh, before we send for uh, installations. They want to know what content is it. Uh, so uh, even, even the, the enforcement also uh, need to know what we have disposed as well. So we cannot simply dispose. So uh, in, in country like just now I share with the US, uh, so that, there, there, there are other concerns also. People actually go and steal the expired medicine also for uh, for misuse purpose. Lah. Okay. So it's, it's, it's a lot of concern have to do. Uh, uh, it's not that simple. So then the other thing is also, I mentioned also about lack of installation centers. Lah. So what we have to do is uh, we have to collect the all these uh, expired medicines uh, from the store first uh, to our HQs. Uh. Then we process it from HQ, only send to... Uh, at the moment, we send to UM uh, because of these safe dump projects. Uh. But uh, we are looking at futures. Uh, maybe we, we, we participate, we work together with some uh, like quality alarms. Uh, they uh, handle all these uh, chemicals, installations. Uh, and then we can look at the bigger skills. Uh. So there are questions also asking about uh, some uh, either it's a, it's a KKM or also some pharmacy. Uh, do not accept actually medicine actually is not bought by uh, them or resources. Uh. For us, uh, we are open, we are we are not particular about where actually you get from the uh, medicine from, uh, right? whether it's from government hospitals or from, from other places. Uh. So our job is just to handle the expired uh, or unused medicines. Uh. Okay. Uh, so Okay, so about the awareness, uh, this is what we are doing. So, so we think this is uh, something we we really want to want to do, uh, and it's really uh, related to uh, the environment. So, because like uh, I, as what I mentioned, the our CSR initiative, uh, one part is actually on the environments, uh, So this is really uh, very related to our field. So we got one who actually who sell medicines, uh, then we do not want the medicine also in the end also pollute the environments, uh, Okay. Uh, I think the, the question about expired it already uh, uh, answered by uh, Dr. Tan. Okay, so we, we hope uh, in the future uh, we can, can uh, in, increase the, the accessibility and also make it big, la, large, so that more people can return the unused medicines uh, and, and uh, expired medicines uh, through these channels. So. I, I think uh, for us, like what uh, Prof. Deba mentioned is like accessibility. So because uh, even maybe uh, like UM, if they have uh, uh, these uh, bins uh, inside uh, their uh, hospital also, uh, for the public to access this is also very difficult. So, mm -hmm. so uh, accessibility is one of the important uh, points so in, in, in making a success uh, for, for this project. Uh, am I answering all the questions? Yep, accessibility and security, like you mm. mentioned, uh, these are yeah. not just any um, uh, pro household products, they, they are controlled items. So the cost of actually handling all this is a lot, and that's probably why um, hospitals, pharmacy also wouldn't want to receive things unnecessarily because it's going to increase their cost of um, handling, processing this waste. So our message to you, public, also is please, Try not to have unused medicines at home. <laughs> you can try to try to minimize having excessive medicines that you might end up not needing it later on. 
Thank you, Prof. Uh, Deborah, and thank you, Mr. Lu, for the uh, for answering the questions. Maybe uh, follow on from what Prof. Deborah mentioned. Uh, though we are now um, we are we are actually targeting uh, or discuss over how to safely dispose of a uh, used medicine. Ultimately, like what Prof. Deborah mentioned, it's uh, how do we actually reduce um, use. Uh, so maybe before uh, we we. Uh, go on uh, i would like to ask uh, dr tan just to maybe recap just now and she shared about the reduce of uh, unused but the steps that you know can be taken to minimize you know having expired and those redundant medication maybe prof uh, maybe dr tan can you just uh, top up the information thank you, very thank you very much mary i think the very important thing is to stop take at home uh, where you take stock how many of the medications are left before going to refill the prescription. I can understand that some people are afraid their prescription will go out of date if they don't collect it at the certain time. But if I'm not mistaken at our university hospital, if you exceed the time, but you are not yet due to the next clinic, your prescription will be valid until that next clinic date. So don't worry. And even when you present yourself to pharmacy, you can actually say to the dispenser, sir, I only need these three medications. These three I have stopped for whatever reason. I don't want to take them. So that's one. So stop, take, and only collect uh, what you need. The, the 78-year-old gentleman stop taking a uh, list. I really love it. It's so beautiful. And of course, not everybody has that luxury of being so um, literate in their health in their health is called health literacy. So if the children may help or the grandchildren may help their, their older folks at home to, to do that, yeah. I think that's that's all I have to add for the moment. Thank you. Uh, Mary, okay, uh, can I just yes. add one more thing? Sure, sure. Okay, sure, uh, I just wanted to, uh, there were some questions on the incinerator and about ready care. In the University of Malaya Medical Center, our official uh, uh, contract vendor to actually incinerate all our clinical waste and uh, including medications is actually ready care. So um, they are one of the, I'm not advertising for behalf of them. I'm actually telling you that these, this, they are our, our official vendor. But um, in terms of, uh, I used to work for a pharmaceutical company before coming into academia. Now, pharmaceutical companies, if they do research or if they do experiments or, and they have animal waste, clinical waste, medicinal waste, it has to be disposed of properly. So they would also have to incinerate their waste. So it's the same uh, principle as what we're saying, that is that medicines are a, um, are a special kind of chemical waste. It has to be treated, it has to be incinerated properly so that it doesn't contaminate the environment. And that's basically our take-home message. Don't throw things in the normal garbage, don't flush them down the toilet, don't, uh, don't throw them down the sink. Thank you. Okay, hey, thank you, Dr. Polly. Uh, due to time constraint, uh, we may uh, have to end the, uh, we will end our webinar uh, now. And um, this, uh, this last uh, word that for, for this, actually we run this uh, webinar also because we started a project uh, in the Faculty of Medicine five years ago. So we are all, we means our team, you see the team here, all the speakers, we are still learning. It's still a very uh, preliminary, um, a very, we are still, there's a lot, a lot of things that needs to be done, needs to be worked on. So bear with us, hopefully uh, more, uh, you know, more, um, there are more things to be done. Yeah, there are more, <laughs> more, more solution maybe, okay. Or um, more rectification can be done in, in times to come. Okay, thanks again, everybody for your time and for your participation in this sorry, webinar. Sorry, Mary, maybe okay. we, can, we can ask if uh, you have any um, oh. topics uh, of interest that may be relevant to us. If you like us to handle that, perhaps as our next uh, webinar, Perhaps you'd like to put it in the chat also. Uh, that would help us decide uh, where to go, what direction to go. Thank you. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, maybe can I ask my colleagues to put a uh, my uh, one email address at the chat, at the chat box. Uh, then uh, you can take down our email address and email to us. Okay. Um, 
Okay, our email address is uh, safedump2020 uh, at gmail.com. Okay. okay, so so we welcome anyone just to give us a, a, a note, okay, uh, through this uh, email address. Uh, any more um, comments uh, or any add-on notes that you would like to give to the public uh, for now? Okay, um, if not, Okay, uh, thank you again for attending this uh, webinar. Hope that you have enjoyed the session and got maybe not all, but some queries answered. Uh, do email us for any other further information that you would like to discuss or we can discuss together and uh, keep in touch and look out for our next webinar in the series. Okay, and thanks again for your attendance and participation and uh, enjoy your weekend. Hope to see you all in our next uh, webinar when we have. Okay, and uh, once again, I also want to thank all the participants and also thank the speaker for <laughs> this wonderful uh, webinar session. Okay, uh, thank you. And thank you very much for joining us. Thank, thank you. you for joining me. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I posted a question, but uh, I think it was overlooked. I'm just asking, can these mineral supplements that are expired, can we just crush it up and put it in the ground as a fertilizer? Oh, let me take that question. Actually, I saw that question, madam. My father is an avid gardener and yeah. we have actually put too much normal fertilizer before onto the plants and they died. So I do not recommend putting any other chemicals apart from uh, the the prescribe fertilizers for plants please don't do it you might your beautiful plants might die i saw that question i was so tempted to answer it but we were short of time thank you so much for attending our okay. webinar yes thank sorry you. yeah thank you thank, thanks uh, thanks dr kim oh, dr. okay great okay okay so, bye -bye, everybody. okay so we, we shall end the session now and thank you once again and see you in our next series of our webinar bye bye, bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.